I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to introduce you to a term which you've possibly heard before. You've heard it in the movies, you've heard it in medical documentaries, you've probably heard it in simple conversations as well. You've probably read it in books that revolve around the mind and the brain. It's called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, when you hear the word, you, you figure it's something really complicated and you know, difficult to understand. But today, I'm gonna to break it down and simplify it for you. Because when you understand that the brain has the potential of something called neuroplasticity, what you immediately start to feel is a sense of empowerment that you can make change in every aspect of your life that can be changed. There is also things that cannot be changed, which we have to learn how to accept. And there are things that can be changed, but we don't want to change it, or we don't believe that we can change it. When you understand neuroplasticity, you can apply it to disease, you can apply it to recovery, you can reply, apply it to prevention, your relationships, addictions, whether it's gambling, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's mindless sex, whatever it is, okay? Neuroplasticity finds a place in your life wherever the brain is involved. Let me put it that simple. And we'll also learn a couple of exercises that we can do today to improve neuroplasticity. So what is neuroplasticity? It's the ability of the brain to adapt to your internal environment and your external environment. Adaptation and change is always difficult because first the brain tries to resist what it is used to. Okay, and a lot of us don't want to move out of our comfort circles. We don't want to move out of our comfort zones. And so we become used to comfort and that becoming used to comfort, the brain also now forms a new neural pattern that that is how your life is supposed to be. So anything that requires change now becomes more and more difficult. Neuroplasticity is also the ability of the brain to do something called neurogenesis, which is grow new neurons. Synaptogenesis, grow new synaptic connections, which is required for communication, signaling, pathways. Let me give you an example. If I tell you right now to lift your little finger, okay, in less, in less than a nanosecond, you heard me say, lift your middle finger, uh, sorry, your, your little finger, middle finger, whatever it is, okay, and you lifted it. What happened? In those nanoseconds, you heard, your brain got the message, it sent a signal through your synaptic connections, the action was the lifting of your little finger, all in less than a nanosecond. That is the beauty and intelligence of the human body that we take for granted. Now, our neurons constantly, constantly change. Let's say I'm gonna tell you today that every sip of water that you take is removing toxins out of your body and providing energy into your body. And I tell you this over and over again, and you start doing it. Every sip of water that you take, you start remembering what Luke said, that every sip of water that I'm taking is flushing toxins out of my body, and it is increasing my energy at a cellular level. Now, whether it works or not, your brain is gonna form a new connection using neurogenesis and synaptogenesis. It's gonna create a pattern. <clears throat> Whether you believe it or not, the more you do it, every time you keep doing it, after our five days of doing it, when you take a sip of water, you're gonna think of what Luke said. Whether you believe it or not, you are gonna think that when you take a sip of water, toxins are flushing out of your system and energy is building in every cell of your body. Okay, there's no magic in what I said. The magic is in neuroplasticity. The ability of your brain to create a new impression. Now, how is this beneficial to us? A lot of us believe that when we slip into depression, there is no way out. A lot of us believe that once we've lost love, we can never find love again. <clears throat> a lot of us believe that once we get a fourth stage cancer, that means it's time to pull out the will and write our letters to people because we are going to die. But we all know that's untrue. We know it's dangerous, but we all know that there are millions of people with fourth stage who are still living their 10th and 15th and 20th year of life. We also know millions of people who have gotten out of depression. We also know a lot of people who never believed that they could find love again and they found it. How does this happen? It all comes down to the way you think and the way you believe. So if you start strengthening a neural pattern that you can never find love again, what pattern is gonna become strong in your mind that you can never find love again? And the more you strengthen it by thinking about it or believing in it. So like some people make statements, 
all men are bad. All men are dogs. All women are X, Y, Z. All people are like this. All teenagers are like that. Guess what you're doing? Whether they are like that or not is not your concern. But every time you keep saying that, you are strengthening that pattern. And that pattern is becoming your behavior, your thought process, and your experience of life. So even if your teenagers aren't gonna be that bad, but your neural pattern is so strong, even the smallest, smallest instance or the smallest incident of a teenager will be magnified in your brain because that is the belief system you have set up with the kind of thinking that you have given your mind continuously. Neuroplasticity in medicine is beautiful. Today we know that someone who's lost a limb, okay, maybe in an accident, maybe it had to be amputated, Today we know that even with the lost limb, okay, the body still has memory of what, of what can affect it. Whether it's heat, whether it's cold, whether you take an ice cube and you put it to the end of the limb that was cut off, the brain responds the same way like the limb still existed. This is the beauty of the brain, which means it is so promising for people and victims of strokes, partial strokes, complete paralytic strokes, the brain can be trained again. Am I saying with neuroplasticity, you're gonna get out of bed and walk after a stroke? No, but do you have the ability to train it to some amount of movement? Absolutely, yes. That's the same concept that works with speech therapy. It can get better if you're willing to believe in it. And there's no airy-fairy science around this. It is called neuroplasticity. If there is a region of your brain that is injured, Okay, there is another region of the brain that can now compensate the injured part of the brain by growing new neurons and new synaptic connections. And that is the beauty of it. So when you get into a cycle of depression, okay, and this is not to take away, a lot of people depressed like to wallow in self-pity. And I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way because it becomes their identity. Their new identity is people will see me as depressed. That's my new identity. And it's extremely important for us to break it or someone who is hurting from a relationship of lost love. It becomes their new identity that, oh, I'm a victim. He hurt me, she hurt me, he cheated on me, she cheated on me. It becomes your new identity for how you wanna be unconsciously recognized in society. And only you can change that. Medicine can help you with the chemical imbalances and all of that stuff, but if you think that medicine alone is gonna heal you, you are never gonna get better. You have to put in the work and work with neuroplasticity which is changing the ability of your brain and creating new experiences. Let's talk about addiction. You start off with the first joint and then the second and then the fourth and then the fifth and then it's not enough. So you move on to your first line of cocaine or you move on to your LSD or your MDMA or whatever it is. And the addiction starts to grow stronger and stronger because you're strengthening the pattern in your subconscious mind. Okay, now you can't take someone who's addicted to alcohol and drugs and sit them down and give them a motivational talk or use uh, emotional blackmail, you're letting down the family, you're letting down your parents, you're a disgrace to society. It's never gonna work. What you need to do is on the bad habits, you gotta stack the new habits. So you can't just get someone off drugs by telling them to do it. You gotta create a new experience to replace the old experience. And the more you do that, the older experience starts to get weaker because you're not strengthening it. And the new experience that you're putting, so every time I feel like smoking a joint, I'm gonna pick up a book and read. Example, I'm gonna eat a bowl of peanuts. I'm gonna talk to my best friend. I, I wanna get a hug. I'm replacing the old experience with a new experience. And that is neuroplasticity after a while. No matter how difficult it is, after a while, it starts to diminish and it gets weaker and weaker. And that's the only way out of a bad habit, any bad habit. You can only stack it with a good habit or a good experience or a new experience. And that's how we change our brain. So if I continuously think in a particular direction, now let's say that doesn't serve me well, it's negative. I'm only strengthening it. It's gonna become a stronger part of my life. But if I replace it, I don't know. I know my mind is thinking negative. Let me stack a positive on it, okay? You can never think positive 24 seven, impossible. Don't listen to people who tell you, be positive, think positive, no. But you can flip a negative to a positive. And the more you do that, you build new neural circuits. And when you build new neural circuits and you strengthen it, that's the beauty of neuroplasticity, the healing of your cancer. If you go into a cancer, reading every single sad story of every cancer, person who's gone through it, that's gonna become your experience. 
But if you look at it differently and say, that doesn't have to be my experience. I have an intelligence within me that can heal me, that can, and you go in with that conviction, okay? You start to support a new neural circuit which is healing for the physical body. It's as simple as that. Just because science says it, just because statistics say it, doesn't mean it has to become your experience. Statistics are numbers, science are theories. You are a human being. You're based on physiology, physiology, chemistry, biology, cosmic energies, and a lot more. Science is just theoretical, which can change like it's always changing all the time. They told you not to have cholesterol. Today, they're telling you to have cholesterol. They said bad fats are bad. Today, they're saying saturated fats are good. So science can always change, and it's good. We need science. But never forget the intelligence of the brain. You can create your new experience right now of how you want your life to be. Or your life can be a puppet version of all of your friends' opinions, social media's opinions, your lover's opinions, your parents' opinions. You know, we have to let go of opinions. So we allow our brain to build our own experiences. Of course, we can take knowledge, we can take science, we can put it together to make sure we're safe and do the right things. But you have a drawing board that is blank in your mind. And you need to take that drawing board and plan your experience in detail, how you want to recover from your condition, how you want health to look for you, how you want love to look for you, how you want abundance to look for you. The other day, I, I, I had a conversation with a 16-year-old kid, and I asked him, he was talking to me, I said, you know, what's your definition of abundance? He said, look, at least two rolls right Rolls Royces in my uh, in my garage, and I want a diamond ring, and I want a Rolex watch, and I want a I want a penthouse apartment. And I was like, Oh my God, your whole meaning of abundance is warped completely. But it's not his fault. That's what social media teaches you. The meaning of abundance is to have more material things, and yet you can feel unhappy and sad no matter how much you have because abundance is a state of mind. You can have little, but yet you can feel abundant because of the state of your mind. So neuroplasticity, no matter where you're stuck in life today, you have the ability to create an experience in your mind. Now, if it's so easy, your next question is, Luke, then why don't people do it? Because people are afraid of failure. People want, if I do this, will I get the result? It's like they want to guarantee that something's going to work or they don't do it. That is a feeling of entitlement. If I'm going to put in some time, I need to get this. No, you're not entitled to anything. None of you, none of us are entitled to anything. We reap what we sow. You put in the work, you get the result. You put in the sacrifice, you get the result. Just because you're rich, famous, beautiful, whatever it is, it doesn't mean life has to work for you the way you want it to work for you. It comes down to the power of the brain. Neuroplasticity. So what you keep teaching your children, what your children keep seeing in you will become their experience of how they need to deal with ups and downs in life, how they need to look at weight, health, death, grief, and all of these things. You can dissolve yourself in spirituality. I don't have a problem with that. But if you're not constantly creating new habits and new experiences with the ability of your own brain, because one day some spiritual leader said this, now you follow that path. The second day you watched another video and now you follow another path. The idea of spirituality is to take the essence of it and now build your own experience with your own brain. Because what happens in your brain becomes your experience. And that is neuroplasticity. Every spoon of food that you take, you can anchor it with a new neural pattern. Oh, this spoon is gonna heal me. This spoon is energizing me. This spoon is helping me lose that excess fat. This spoon is improving my eyesight. And the more you keep making that pattern, your subconscious mind, guess what? It responds to what you believe. It's as simple as that. You believe you're stupid, you will appear to be stupid. You believe you're ugly, you will appear to be ugly even though you're not ugly. So that is the power of the subconscious mind and that is neuroplasticity. It is in your control. It takes a little bit of effort, it takes a little bit of time, and if you can just hold on to results, like compounding. Any smart investor will tell you, have a long distance, uh, have a long-term plan for investing and you will make millions, and you will make millions. Not like when the markets change, everyone wants to get out of the markets, they lose faith, they start abusing the same markets that they were now, they were praising a few months ago. You see, no one have patience. With neuroplasticity, it's patience. Let me give you a simple example. When you're teaching your child to brush their teeth, they don't get it the first time. You gotta teach them over and over again, neuroplasticity again. So when you want things in life, what makes you think it has to happen the moment you want it? Neuroplasticity, create it 
in your mind. And when you create that in your mind, I can tell you it is the most beautiful experience. You begin to transform your life inside out, not outside in. All the healing happens from within. All the transformation happens from within you. You have the power of life and death within you. You have the power to choose how you want to use it. And that is the power of neuroplasticity. It's free. It's inexpensive. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. If you want to keep that brain and neuroplasticity powerful, keep creating new experiences in your life. Don't have the same old boring routine. So if creating new experiences is meeting new friends, visiting new places, doing something differently, trying a new exercise. That's great for your brain. Practicing it over and over again. Take something and practice it on repetition. On repetition over and over again. It's great for neurogenesis. Yoga is brilliant for neuroplasticity. Using your, your least dominant hand. So if I'm a righty, I should try brushing my teeth with my left hand or sipping my coffee with my left hand. So keep confusing the brain. Neuroplasticity, it grows stronger and stronger. Synaptogenesis, neurogenesis. Reading, the power of reading is great for neuroplasticity. Sleeping, deep sleep. All the activity we're talking about happens in deep sleep, so sleeping. Fasting today has also scientifically been proven to help us with new synaptic connections in the brain. Fasting and sleeping, learning a musical instrument or playing a musical instrument, and then of course, brain activities, brain exercises, board games, card games that stimulate your brain. These are all great little exercises that cost you no money, and the more time you spend on social media, the more time you need to do these exercises because social media and ad gadgets are basically decreasing your cognitive decline. When everything is so easy, I don't have to think. I can just use a calculator. I don't have to think about spell check. Am I, because I have a spell check, I don't have to think if my spellings are right. We're decreasing the ability of neurogenesis and synaptogenesis. So the brain, we think we're getting smarter because of technology and it all seems so cool, but we're actually getting dumber. We're actually getting a lot more dumber. That's how it is. So we got to keep on strengthening. While, while technology is trying to take over the world, we can't let it take over our brains. We can't let it take over the intelligence of our body. So for that, we need to do these simple exercises. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.